Green Harbor Waterfront Lodging is nestled in a woodland setting on a picturesque ocean inlet. Green Harbor offers so much for a fun-filled yet affordable family waterfront vacation. Enjoy our private boating beach with ramp and dock, free rowboats and paddle boats, oversized heated outdoor pool and kiddie pool. You'll enjoy our attractive waterfront and beachside accommodations. So visit us online at gogreenharbor.com. session please join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First up this evening is uh, our annual shellfish management closures, Chuck Martinson. Mr. Chairman, the members of the board, Chuck Martinson, uh, Acting Director of the Department of Natural Resources. I'll be brief in the interest of uh, saving some time this evening. Um, what I normally do with these, and if it's all right with uh, members of the board, is I like to go through uh, the changes that are uh, changes from last year. Uh, the regulations are relatively boilerplate, so what I'd like to do if that is well with everyone is go to the changes. The first one is going to be in this packet, if you go to SC11, which is Great Pond, which should be um, on the, believe the fifth page. What I'm proposing we do is um, move the opening of Great Pond from last year, which we did was December uh, 1st to November 15th. This will allow the area to be open for two extra weeks for shell fishing. I was approached by uh, one of our commercial shell fishermen who subsequently wrote a letter um, asking for this area to be opened up a little bit earlier uh, because the number of shellfish in there were, 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 there were a relatively decent amount of shellfish that were in the area that they'd like more of an opportunity to fish a little bit earlier in the year. Uh, so that would be the first change. The second change would be SC12, which would be uh, Green Pond, and the proposal on that is to go from a November 1st opening to a December 15th opening. Um, because we'll be moving forward on the Great Pond, we would propose pushing that back a little bit to give that area a little bit more of a rest. Um, and then the last change um, from last year's would be, it's SC 13.2, and it's uh, for Bourne's Pond, and it's basically uh, July, uh, date in July, which is, um, <coughs> going to be July 10th. We're proposing a shellfish day um, to allow family members to come down and try shell fishing without having to purchase a license. Um, it'll be between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. and we'll do this in conjunction uh, with the Falmouth summer camp, with the recreation camp. Uh, we've done this other years. Uh, it's usually very well attended by families and children. Um, so we'll go ahead and move forward with that. Um, again, those are the changes. The other regulations are are similar, uh, very actually the same uh, with last year's. I don't know if there's any specific questions with any of the regulations. Any questions from the board? Yeah. Any public comment? Do I have a motion from the board? I move the regulations as recommended by our uh, acting shellfish warden. Uh, Department of Ed. Yeah. Department okay. Great. Second. Second. Okay, motion in a second. Any further discussion? And last call on public comment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Chuck. I just have one more quick announcement, yep. announcement I'd like to make. Um, I'd like to just thank the GIS and the IT department. We uh, now have 
shellfish uh, maps of the town online which uh, have color coded areas of the entire town showing what's open so those can be downloaded for free uh, on the town website under our department so anyone can go online and find that it's a great idea because reading through these regulations yes. knowing the phones <laughs> myself i was having a little problem about north south and, and each individual one. thank you thank you very much okay Next up on the agenda is a vote to set aside the wind turbine statement of principles. Uh, before we go to this, I'd like to uh, make a statement that uh, myself and uh, Julian Suso met with the affected neighbors um, a week or so ago, a week and a half ago, and uh, we encouraged them to come to the table to work in the consensus building and options analysis group. Uh, we hope that we can come to a conclusion of this whole process uh, by September the 1st. Uh, the group um, had expressed some anxiety of the statement of principles, and we, the, this board has reiterated time and time again that in fact all options are open as we move forward to try to come to a, an amicable decision and to the uh, conclusion of this problem. And we hope that with this group, we will be able to come back with some suggestions to the Board of Selectmen to take some action. Uh, September 1st would be a deadline that the neighbors would like. This board would embrace the sooner the better. Uh, that would enable us to actually put together and formulate a warrant article for the fall town meeting. So I would look to, to show support to the neighbors, to show the neighbors that in fact everything is on the table as we move forward for all stakeholders that we would set aside our statement of principles that uh, the Board of Selectmen had uh, previously published before the Springtown meeting. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to report that at the um, meeting of the, the past of the options analysis group, uh, we did have some representatives from the affected neighbors there, uh, fully participatory, very engaged, open to uh, full discussion about what was going to happen. I thought it was a very, very productive meeting. I still remain optimistic that this process has a chance of getting us some very helpful information as we make our decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to personally thank uh, uh, Todd Drummy and, and Kathy Elder, who uh, I know this is a leap of faith for them to uh, embrace this group and move <laughs> forward and actually believe in this board that, that we will, in fact, be open-minded about any and all alternatives as we move forward. Um, I'll be looking for a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we set aside the statement of principles. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Next up is a report from the Department of Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I realize that you're running a little bit late already and you have a busy schedule this evening, so I'll try to be brief. Uh, since I'm serving as water superintendent as well as director of public works, a couple comments on the water system that uh, over the last several months we tried to make sure that everything is ready for the summer season. So all sources are available and online and all storage tanks have already been inspected and cleaned. We completed the winter round of pilot testing for filtration study uh, that finished up last month. And it will be starting up again around the 1st of August. They'll start mobilizing sometime around middle of next month. And that'll be the summer round of sampling. You need to have the winter and the summer rounds in order to have full season sampling to determine what the protocols are going to be. So then that will culminate in a report that will be available in the fall and then will be presented before the board. In July, uh, at about the same time, maybe the 15th, that we'll be starting that up, I was hoping to be able to meet with the board and give them an interim report uh, from the consulting firm on the study, and then that way it'll be able to bring you forward with where we're going uh, on that study as well. Okay? I have one question on that. Yes, um, go right ahead, Doug. On the, concerning the feasibility study, uh, there's a must decision that's being made, and that's per order of the state as we proceed with our process for the water, determining what we're going to do about the water supply. Is that correct? Correct. By October 1st, the town is going to have to decide one way or the other. Either we will filter in some way, shape, or form, or we will have to add additional disinfection techniques at Long Pond. Either way, it's multi the cheapest, of course, is to add additional disinfection techniques. Um, but those are mandates, and we will have to be uh, making a decision in order to comply with them. Great. Thank you. 
Any other questions? Go ahead, Pat. Well, I, I guess that at some point between now and then, that you will be making a presentation to us, but that will include the the uh, the costs of either option. Yes, the interim report next month is not going to go that far. Um, that will give you a report basically on what we have learned thus far on the sampling that has been performed and to um, provide the board with additional information on the treatment techniques that are being utilized out there. And then in the fall, uh, after September, when we've done the second round, is when we should be able to schedule the additional meeting or meetings that are going to be necessary. Another question. Um, is there... Um, is there a plan to have anything on the warrant for the November town meeting regarding this? Or, or would it come in April? Just, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, the cost analysis as well, not only just to either build or implement it, but also to maintain it over time. We will likely seek um, a delay on the requirements as far as October goes, because in theory, we should be implementing something at that time but we're not going to be able to because we haven't made a decision yet but since we are in the process we'll be seeking a delay probably a one-year delay on that to allow the board and the town to be able to make those decisions so it's not imperative that we necessarily have something at this November's town meeting thank you Good. any other questions okay Evening, <coughs> Peter McConaughey, acting town engineer. Not, not anymore. Uh, um, oh, well, we have oh, you are. He's, yeah. he's still acting. Oh, okay. Still acting. Sorry about that. Still acting. Um, talk about the engineering division and uh, the, the projects that we we're working on. Um, Wild Harbor Road. This was a roadway that that was part of our 2012 uh, roadway maintenance paving list. Um, several roads have already been completed at this time. Um, at this time, we're working with, uh, we're putting plans together and doing some drainage calculations um, to go through the Conservation Commission with this roadway. There's several wetland areas that run through the road, that run through this area with leak offs for the drainage. So uh, we're looking to uh, perform improvements and make improvements um, along the roadway. We'll be going through the Conservation Commission to uh, seek approval. And uh, hopefully later on, further in this year, we'll have a, uh, an asphalt and paving um, over th this roadway from Old Main Road to Arlington, Arlington Street. Betterment roadway design. Th these are the uh, latest round of uh, roadways that we've taken up in the Schumann Valley. Um, you can see the roadways, Austin, Stokes, Redlands, Regis, Shepherds, and the lengths uh, um, to the right. The plans are complete. We're doing final calculations on uh, at this time. We've met with the association. Um, what we, the construction schedule has been set. We're looking forward to moving forward with uh, to working with the association. Um, this will be a lengthy project. This is going to go. This is I'll be looking at for a couple of years uh, on this project to go through. And this includes complete uh, milling, paving, drainage, um, tree work. Um, and the possibility of uh, some sidewalk areas. Um, traffic intersection areas uh, on both these roadways, this slide and the next slide, this is the Jones Road and Davis and uh, Davis Straits um, and, and Tikatik T Ticket Highway. The 25% plans have been complete. Mass DOT has um, come to town and done their 25% plans and um, took comments in from uh, residents and the public. And uh, they went back to the drawing board right now. They're working on 70% plans and uh, reviewing the comments and addressing the comments. Um, there was a shift with these uh, with these intersection projects. The planning department was holding uh, um, was due for the most part during the first 25% of the design was uh, basically managing the project and uh, working with the designer. Um, after the 25%, typically it goes to the engineering department um, with our department, and then we work with the designer um, on all the infrastructure and um, construction and scheduling. At this time, this, these two intersections are looking to go to, to uh, be out to bid in January of 2013, so it could be construction of um, spring of 2013. 
the construction schedule is is they can work until Memorial Day and then they stop for the summer until Labor Day and then they start up in the uh, default time frame. This is the Davisville uh, intersection. They're looking at uh, some uh, driveway openings on this one currently. The Chappaquoit Seawall. This project uh, it set a lot of concern with me uh, recently in recent months and we put a lot of work into this. Um, this package, we put a bid package out uh, two weeks ago to the central register for this package. There's a pre-mandatory, a pre-bid mandatory meeting this mor tomorrow morning um, on site to go with all the contractors to go over the issues, to go with the uh, meeting with the Conservation Commission, the Engineering Department, um, to go over what exactly needs to be done, the construction process, the lay down areas, the time frame. Um, so the mandatory pre-bid meeting is tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. We're meeting with uh, the designer and myself, uh, and I believe the Conservation Commission um, uh, agent, the administrator, will be meeting with the DEP over in Hyannis. And then on Friday morning is the uh, we have a uh, the bid opening. Um, so we're looking at this time. We're looking. We're trying to put in for mid -cons um, July construction, 30-day construction. So we're looking at mid July to mid August. My big concern with this portion of the wall, as, you, as everyone knows, is when Tropical Storm Irene came through. It was an August, it was an end August storm, and it came in, and that's where all this, uh, most of the damage occurred on, on this roadway. Um, with it being a warm winter and the warm waters, uh, we hope we don't get an active season because you know, we want to have this, this work done. The work is starting to progress up uh, to the north and to the south of this area too, so we're going to be looking at doing further design, but this is the critical area the seawall. And Monot Road, um, it's the same thing, we're doing work with the designer, we're putting some plans together, um, once again to do work on the seawood side of the seawall. This shows the sidewalk, so the sidewalk on the opposite side of the seawall shows the revetment and there's uh, areas and um, boulders actually that have been moved and uh, some of the revetment been pushed out. Um, once we get the Chappaquite seawall completed this week and next week, we will be looking, we'll be putting uh, more of our efforts into this project. And that's it, if you have any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Go so ahead. I do have one question. Um, Old Barnstable Road, it's still half finished? Do we have, well, I guess the first question is, is what's holding it up? And two is how long is it gonna take for it to be completely finished? Um, I believe uh, John Lyons will be addressing this uh, more but uh, at this time, NSTAR is, uh, we're waiting for the utility companies. The, there's the utility poles. NSTAR has gone through the, down the roadway and they've moved the utilities. Um, and actually, if you drive down, if you look at the utility poles, they've, they've moved their utilities, they've cut the tops of the poles off. So they, and then after NSTAR comes Verizon, and after N Verizon comes Comcast, and then they will remove the pole. And we, we can't pave the roadway until the uh, poles are out of the, out of the roadway. There's several of the poles that are in the roadway. But at this time, the, the, as far as, as, as paving to do the final course, I believe the town, the town portion is, is completed. I think John will address it some more, but. Um, so it's the utility companies. It's, it's been in style that we've been, um, we've been waiting for for the last couple of months. Any estimates then as to how long it'll take for them to finish their work? Um, we've, been, we've been in constant contact with them, with emails uh, with them and working with them. And uh, we'd like, the plan was I would have liked to have seen it done by the 4th of July, but the 4th of July is two weeks away, so that's, it's, it's not feasible for that. But we're, we're, we keep on sending the emails and we keep in contact with them to, to get them pushing to get Verizon. The, the, the contact has to go through NSTAR to go to the other utilities. We can't call Verizon. We can't call Comstar, Comcast. It has to be NSTAR that does the, that does the um, initiates the calls to remove polls. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'd thank like you to see that PE after your name up there. Nice. Congratulations. Congratulations. For a long time. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. John Lyons, Highway Superintendent. And I'll pick up right where your question was on Old Barnstable Road. That, uh, as you are aware, is part of our Chapter 90 project. Um, that has been a very large project for the, for the highway division. Um, as reported in previous reports, um, all of the drainage work was done in-house. Um, all the tree removal and tree work uh, was done in-house by the, the forestry division. 
Um, all the shoulder preparation, the realigning of the road was all engineered through through the engineering division and, and carved out by, by us. Um, and there is still some shoulder work done and we're not quite at the complete state yet. But um, we'll, uh, I have some, whoops, I have some slides that will kind of go through a chronicle explanation of, of how the process works. This is the actual reclamation of the road. Uh, this is the contractor that came in and they actually pulverize all the existing pavement. It takes several passes um, and they, they uh, break up all the, all the asphalt and, uh, and blend it right into the, into the material. Um, so just another view of the same process there. Uh, following that, the road grader comes and reshapes uh, the road. Um, if there are any drains that haven't worked properly and so forth, that's their opportunity to make sure that the water hits those elevations. Um, following that, the, uh, the road is compacted by a vibratory roller. Um, it's, a, it's a process that, that uh, moves the whole length of the road. Um, obviously, during construction, one, one side of the road is always open to traffic, so the road is never completely uh, closed. Um, and, and with any uh, construction project, there's always dust, particularly in the, in the summer. So there is a, uh, a provision for that where the water wagon goes up and down the street, uh, controls the dust, and actually also helps with the compaction as well. Um, as, as Peter mentioned, uh, well, actually, I'll get back to that in a second, but the, the road paving follows that process. Um, and this is uh, the contractor doing the, the road paving. Um, again, it's done in sections. Uh, it's rolled as they go along. Traffic travels on, on the, uh, the unpaved section. And then once they, once they complete one side, once it's rolled, it's, it's usually well enough for the traffic to, to get back on it. So then it becomes passable on the, on the new laid asphalt and they'll work on the other side. And this is coming up to the intersection at Hayway Road. Uh, following that, there's some work to uh, adjust some of the structures that, uh, that are in the road. Um, that process, the next few slides will show that process. The rises are put on, the, uh, the structures are brought up. Um, as, as anyone who's traveled the road realizes that there's, they're sticking up um, a portion now because that's when that top coat of asphalt goes on, those will be flush with the, with the new road. Um, we have the rubber sleeves that go around them that help uh, with the impact so that cars can travel over them. Uh, fortunately, most of them are right in the, uh, the center of the lane so the cars can actually straddle them. So they, they really don't need to hit each and every one. Um, again, another, another overview of the whole thing. Um, at the very end of, of Old Barnstable Road where it intersects with Hayway, the granite curbing was put in on two of the radiuses. These, these were very tight, right angle, 90 degree turns. And it was very difficult to maneuver a trailer at, at that intersection um, on both of those corners. So we took advantage of the project to, to widen the corners and to, uh, and to install the, the granite curtain. And there you can see how the old road um, used, to, uh, used to form there. Uh, this is uh, also part of the Chapter 90 project, uh, Seco Shores. Um, this is the milling process. This is a, a different type of process from what you just saw with the reclamation. This is actually just grinding an inch or two of the existing pavement. You can see the, the rough surface there. And then the paving process is very similar. And that's the, uh, that's the completed product afterward. And of course, uh, there's new line striping. Um, with the project, there's uh, going to be new street signs installed. The signs have been ordered. They just arrived. Uh, so that process will begin. There's quite a few signs, so it, it'll, it'll take a little bit to get them, to get them all in place. Um, similarly, this is uh, Thomas B. Landers and Blacksmith Shop Road. Um, Thomas B. Landers fall, fell into the Chapter 90 program. We took advantage here of, of a similar situation with that corner. That's um, heading towards the new ice rink if you, if you went straight up. So this would be taking the right on Blacksmith Shop. That was a very tight corner and it's heavily used by tractor trailers coming from the, uh, the concrete plant and so forth. Um, they had a difficult time and that, that whole radius was being chewed up. Um, we, we repaired the drain that was there because um, that was an issue and uh, we were able to push the shoulder back a bit and, and re, uh, reshape the slope and uh, loom and seed it. And then we just went up a bit just to incorporate the whole intersection into the project. 
Um, and there's another angle of the improved slope. And the new pavement markings, and again, that's heading uh, towards the highway on Thomas B. Um, part of our road maintenance project, uh, which is an annual uh, event, is um, the crack sealing. And uh, we had uh, the contractor in town uh, earlier this spring, and uh, we got uh, several roads done with the crack sealing. We still have some full depth patching to do in various locations. Uh, we'll be working on that. Um, another picture of the, uh, it's, it's quite a process. And then over at uh, Minot Beach on the west side, uh, which is the beach parking lot furthest away from Central Ave, we had an erosion issue um, in the parking lot. There was a dune there and quite a bit of it got eroded. Uh, during a previous storm and uh, with the beach department uh, um, asked us to uh, give them a hand and uh, restore. Uh, those are dredgings from Salt River and Fresh River. Uh, when the river had clogged, uh, we, were, we took those dredgings out of the river and we were able to truck them here and, uh, and use them for this, uh, for this purpose. And that's, uh, do you have any questions? Any questions? Yes, David. Just, just a couple, John. Um, there's a woman who lives in uh, Plum Hollow. Every other day she's out on Old Barnstable from Hayway to the Mashby line filling a bag of trash. Yeah. And she asked me to approach you when this road is done if you would consider putting some signs for trash, you know, litter. Mm -hmm. Secondly, at the intersection of Hayway and Old Barnstable, uh, Hayway and Old Barnstable, where you put that, where you showed the radius. The curb, yeah. Somebody already hit one. It's a big chunk. You see that? It was a school bus. It was a school bus taking the corner. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a big chunk of it. Yeah. Okay. yeah I so just thought we'll before move, they put the final yeah. coat. Yeah. No. We'll we'll uh, we'll make that repair. And uh, uh, actually, I think we can realign that even back a, a smidge so that uh, we can gain you know another at least six inches or so and and uh, and make it a little more friendly. The other question I have for you coming in from. Um, Mashby on O'Barnstable. Is that a relatively new type of thing, the speed sign that flashes your speed? Yeah, we just, that was just installed last Friday. Friday. Yeah. yeah. Um, we haven't used any in town yet. We, you know, uh, Catherine Lee Bates will, will, uh, will likely have that in the school zone area. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, uh, it, I don't think they're new to the industry, but they are certainly new to us. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we discussed it, and uh, certainly there's a lot of traffic that comes from Mashby yeah. into Falmouth. Um, as a cut through, and uh, it's very, um, it gets your attention. Well, it does. I, it's very similar to the trail of the police department has put, which is out on Monarch Road right, right now. It gives you an educational thing. So Absolutely. I, I just, yeah. I hope to see more of those. I just, yeah. from my point of view, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Great. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thanks, John. Good evening. My name is Jerry Thomas. I'm the wastewater superintendent. I know you have two slides. Uh, there's five bullets, I'm only going to go over two. Uh, with your indulgence, I think the other three bullets, there will be plenty of time to talk about uh, wastewater planning in the turbines. Right button. Okay. Uh, Shivrick's Pond, uh, this is the outline of where we are. Uh, we, this is what we're installing, carbon absorption for the type of odor we have, for odor control and replacement of wet well, well and ventilation system. We've identified the low bidder. We got a very good contract price of 189,000. Uh, we've issued a notice of award in June. We hope to sign the contract fairly quickly, and we hope this project is substantially completed by the end of this year. Uh, this is just a following up, a follow up <coughs> on the force main repair. Uh, you saw the previous slide and the in detail briefing I gave you on that project. The slide on the right is to show that the paving for the bike path has been complete since that was a concern to many people. That was completed, I think, around April of this year. Uh, that concludes my portion of the presentation. There are no other managers, so I'll be followed by Mr. Ray Jack. Oh, uh, hold on a minute. Oh. A couple of <coughs> right, right. I was told five minutes or less. My question is the source of the funds for the Shivrix Pond project. I thought that was included in one of the articles it was. of the, town meeting, the Article 17 or 18? 18, I believe. The Article 18. So that's where the funding yes, is? Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you very much. You made it under five. I get a bonus this year. <laughs> get up my tie, Jerry. Nothing from nothing is nothing. Uh, Mr. Gomes was going to try to be here this evening. Um, uh, 
Ms. Newton is on vacation, but Mr. Gomes was going to try to be here this evening, but he had a personal matter that he wasn't sure if he was going to make it, so I guess he's not. So I'll, I will try to handle his. Uh, Gulf Fuller Field, this is the infield over at the ball field, and this is prior to having the infield redone uh, with new sod. And this is the after picture. So the Commodores actually funded that, but we provided all the labor as we do on all the fields. But this was a great project to uh, get done for this year. And uh, the way it was done is going to enhance it for the next couple of years as well, because they not only did the uh, siding, but the substrate as well. <clears throat> for the Veterans Day Memorial Services, uh, the memorial here, as well as the Kathleen Bates Memorial, uh, were redone. So this is one of the before pictures and utilizing uh, helping hands from the Mullenhall School, which was a project with the kids over there, over uh, 22 kids uh, assisted in this endeavor. So the Beautification Council also provided the source of funding for some of the plants and what have you. So everybody was working very well together with the Parks Department. It turned out to be a really great project. We've gotten a lot of favorable comments back from it. Uh, so this is how it turned out as far as the memorial goes. And then this one here is the before picture for the Kathleen Bates statue. And that was the after shot. So it truly was a great community type of project. Really worked out well. Uh, this was just finishing up a project that the parts department had started before. It was about 320, I think it was 320 feet of uh, cobblestone edging that they had put on there in order to delineate the planning area, which you can see. Uh, between the sidewalk area and the curb area at the bottom that has numerous plantings along there so this was just finalizing that project on main street these were some of the benches that we have down there and of course when it comes to maintenance it's very difficult time wise money wise to be able to get to the maintenance what have you but each year in different departments we always try to do a little bit more on main street between the poles and what have you so this year the parks department took on the uh, benches out there and this is what they were looking like before and they took them back to the shop they cleaned them all up replaced some of the bad boards and then they stained them painted them and put them back in place and this is the village green fence uh, the fence was made of locust wood it's really not that old um, but I guess it's really a question of the grade if you will because I know that there have been uh, considerations about the older fence that was there that lasted uh, several decades and this one's less than 20, about 20 years old. So here it's, it's in severe distress, and this is just showing you a couple areas of that distress, but it's literally all throughout the entire park area. So I think in the future we're going to be looking at substantial rebuilding and or replacement of the village green fence area. And that was after they did their work to try to get it ready for the summer season. And that was that. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? No, but I remember probably 20 years ago when, when that fence was a replacement for the old one. Right. And yeah, you're probably right. About every 20 years, it'll have to be replaced. Is that something that the sheriff's department can assist with, in, or is that a town project? Well, I know that the town will be looking at it. Um, it's not so much. I don't think it's so much the the labor cost as much as it is the cost of that of wood. The wood is up there that is some very expensive wood and of course if you get if you get cheaper grades of wood they don't they don't last as long they don't look as good uh, and I think people are really attached to the locust up in that area because historically that's what it's been okay great thank you very much thank you and we does that conclude your report or do you have someone else wonderful we thank said we try to be quick thank you very much any sure any public comment come on up Please address it through the chair. Uh, uh, Mark Finner in uh, Precinct 6. <clears throat> um, in the days or weeks after the last uh, quarterly report presentation, the um, ice and snow removal figures were released. There was also an article done about it in the newspaper, uh, and they covered about, uh, I'd say, 20 towns in the uh, area. Uh, of those 20 towns, only two overspent their ice and snow budget because, as anybody remembers, there was very little snow this winter. One town, I can't remember what it was, 
overspent their budget by something like 15%. It wasn't a great deal. Our town, and these figures are not exactly, I don't swear by them, but they're roughly close. Our town budgeted somewhere in the neighborhood of $89,000 for ice and snow removal, and the actual bill um, at the end of the year was somewhere in excess of $250,000, which is close to a 300% uh, uh, overage, whatever. Um, I was asked, uh, and I was curious myself, so I investigated, and I was told um, what they do with the DPW is um, when equipment breaks, they just put it in the shed, store it aside, and because the snow and ice budget, by statute, is the only budget you can overspend on, they, as soon as the first snow comes, they say that all that equipment was broken during the snowstorm, and then, therefore, they get funding to fix it. Um, I'm not going to believe them, but I'd like to hear somebody deny that, if possible. Thank you. Um, there are repairs that are paid for out of the snow and ice budget, and those are repairs that are, are, are breakages that, that are incurred during storms. Um, parts are bought uh, for that purpose. Um, some of the repairs are major in nature. There could be transmissions. Um, there have been blown engines. Uh, so it, it varies from A to Z. Um, as far as the overall budget, um, our snow and ice budget, as you know, is $96,750 um, in salt alone. And that is, that is the, the preseason preparation of stocking the salt shed. Because as everyone knows, you never know what's the, what the winter is going to bring. Um, stocking the salt shed, uh, we only had the one, the one major event, if you will, where we had the eight inches. But we did have several uh, salting events where we had icy roads and so forth. We spent 92000 of that 96750 in just road salt. Um, you throw in the contractor cost for the, for the uh, snowstorm that we had, the eight inch snowstorm. <laughs> you throw in the overtime because it was weekends. Um, all the other cumulative costs, and that's how we got to, to the figure that we got to. Um, in the big picture, um, yeah, a lot of towns didn't go over their budgets, but a lot of towns were budgeted uh, much more. Um, Barnstable has um, a six hundred thousand dollar snow and ice budget. They only spent five hundred. Um, but if you look in comparison um, with the same amount of snowfall and so forth, they still spent much more than Falmouth did um, for only about a hundred miles more of road than what we maintain. Um, that's probably the best explanation I can give. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay. Anything else? Any other public comment? Uh, all right, thank you very much. Thank you for your report. Next up is a uh, vote to affirm appointments. Uh, we're going to turn over the first one uh, as a new personnel director to the town manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Uh, as the uh, board is aware on uh, appointments of a certain department and division head uh, personnel, uh, while the town manager is the appointing authority, those recommendations uh, for appointment are brought to the board for the board's consideration and concurrence. And they have two uh, recommendations to bring to the board uh, this evening. Uh, the first is uh, uh, Ms. Denise Coleman as a Director of Personnel. And I wanted to uh, give a little a brief summary. I know I've provided the board with a uh, copy of uh, Ms. Coleman's uh, resume. And she is in attendance uh, with us here this evening. Uh, Ms. Coleman is currently serving as an area human resources manager with Cape Cod Healthcare, having worked in that capacity since 2008. She served as the human resources director uh, for the town of Weymouth, Massachusetts from 2003 to 2007. The board's probably aware that's, of course, a similar position to the personnel director position here, except that Weymouth uh, has considerably, uh, is a larger community uh, with a larger number of employees. Uh, Ms. Coleman has a bachelor's degree in business administration from Emanuel College. She's an experienced personnel administrator, including considerable experience in both municipal and private sector uh, personnel issues, including uh, contract negotiation and collective bargaining. As she is currently uh, also another matter uh, I should note, uh, as the board is aware on department heads, uh, there is a residency requirement. Uh, Ms. Coleman is currently a resident 
of the uh, neighboring town of Sandwich. And uh, pursuant to that, I uh, would ask the board uh, to consider waiving the residency requirement for department heads in an instance like this where we have a highly qualified uh, individual who is, uh, as noted, a resident of a neighboring community already. And I uh, heartily recommend uh, Ms. Denise Coleman uh, for a personnel director position. And we did receive a large number of applications and has been a, a very exhaustive process, as Ms. Coleman is aware, in terms of background checks, reference checks, and a multitude of other uh, reviews. And uh, be happy to answer any questions the board may have. I would uh, welcome uh, your questions, your concurrence, and uh, you may wish to hear from Ms. Coleman as well. Any questions? Uh, maybe we would take a, a vote to affirm the appointment and then ask Ms. Coleman to come up and, and speak a little bit. Um, I shall move that we approve the appointment. Second. Motion and a second. <coughs> Any discussion from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Please, uh, could we have you come up and say a few words? Thank Welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening. I, I again, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I would be honored to be a part of the town of Falmouth. And I um, am very much committed to providing high quality programs and services that everyone will benefit from. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you on board. I know that uh, uh, we've had a void in, in, in the town hall with a you know, personnel director. We've filled that void a, with a, a part-time consultant. But I'm sure that the rank and file employees of the community look forward to having someone to deal with. Uh, um, on uh, whether it be questions, answers, or as the town moves forward uh, in succession plans uh, from additional departments. Um, if there's anyone on the board that can help you, uh, give you a little institutional memory, I guess, feel free to call on any one of us. Thank you. But thank you very much and welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm thrilled. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Patty. Chairman, um, I make a motion to waive the residency requirement. Okay, there's a motion to waive the residency requirement. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, members of the board, and welcome, Denise. I do want to note that uh, Denise will begin her work as personnel director on Monday, July 30th, and uh, obviously giving uh, uh, adequate notice to her current uh, employer that she'll be joining us soon, so we do look forward to that with great anticipation. Great, thank you. Next also, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I also ha have a, uh, a proposed appointment of Water Superintendent, uh, Mary Beth <coughs> Weiser. And uh, Ms. Weiser uh, is an experienced water systems manager. Her background, training, and experience uh, meet or exceed all of the requirements uh, for this position. She possesses a Bachelor of Science degree in Biology and Chemistry and is licensed to operate water systems in both uh, New Hampshire and Massachusetts. She's demonstrated management and supervisory experience, water treatment system experience, water system licensing, budgeting and planning for water systems as well. She has worked as utilities manager for Salem, New Hampshire, and as chief water plan operator for the city of uh, Rochester, New Hampshire as well. Uh, she would be available to begin with us on Monday, July 6th. And I wanna uh, thank uh, Ray Jack for his uh, excellent work as well as our other colleagues in, in uh, going through a number of uh, applicants for this position as well. And I believe Ray, is Mary Beth Weiser here? She Mary Beth is with us, row. okay, just right, just slightly out of eye, eye, uh, eye shot for me. Uh, and uh, so Mary Beth Weiser is here, uh, Mr. Chairman, to make a few comments if that would be in order for the board. And uh, we would welcome the board's concurrence for this appointment as well. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion? I'll move the appointment of Mary Beth Weiser as the water superintendent. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? I just, Mr. Yep. Chair, I just want to say after reading your resume, um, our, the past history over the past couple of years, I want it's very refreshing to see somebody who's actually very knowledgeable <laughs> about water, and um, I really appreciate. Uh, you showing an interest in Falmouth, and I, I'm very, very impressed with your past work and your resume. Thank you very much. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 
Would you like to come up and introduce yourself to the community? Um, good evening, and um, again, thank you very much for the appointment. Um, I'm very excited. Um, this is a new adventure for me. I'm relocating from Maine, so I'm going to be pr pretty busy over the next few weeks packing up and moving to Falmouth. So thank you. Okay. Well, I, I know that the town of Falmouth welcomes you. We've been looking forward to having a new wastewater uh, supervisor, uh, manager. <laughs> water. Well, water. water. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jerry, I didn't get rid of you yet. Uh, yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you very much. Uh, um, and reiterating what David had to say, your, your experience in filtration is, is also going to be a, a, a pleasant addition to the community as we move forward with that. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next up is committee reappointments. If anyone needed to leave the room, you can do so before we get to those things. Um, the first set of interviews uh, we, is the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we had one interview last week with David Haddad. Tonight we have an interview with Patricia Johnson. Pat, would you like to come up? I'd like to give us a minute or two update and we'll go from there. Hi, for the benefit of the audience, I am Patricia Johnson. I live in North Falmouth. I am currently finishing my fourth year as an associate member or an alternate member on the Board of Appeals. I am retired. I am very diligent. Uh, I always do my site visits, and I do the homework that's necessary to make good decisions on the board. And I'm reviewing them, a lot of materials in the zoning office. I was on the ZBA in the 80s as an alternate. I have also been a town <coughs> meeting member for more than 25 years, and I served on the design review committee, and I was on the land bank committee from the, when it started. I have been a year-round resident of Falmouth for about 30 years and a taxpayer for 15 years before that, 30 years. I have a very good understanding uh, of the zoning bylaws in town and the history of Falmouth. I have a lot of institutional memory <coughs> because of my interest in the zoning and development of Falmouth. Uh, I'm not involved in any businesses uh, that would uh, uh, slant my uh, or preclude my ability to make a fair and open decision on the cases that come before the board. Do you have any questions? Okay. I'll open up the questions from the board. Uh, Doug, you want to go first? Um, thank you. you said you've been uh, the alternate member for the past four years, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. We have five-year terms now. That was Thank you. Okay. David? Um, I've actually been to a few of the ZBA meetings. I'm very familiar with um, Mrs. Johnson. I really have no questions, but thank you very much for your application. Um, Brett? No questions. Thank you. Pat? Well, I just have a comment. Um, I know from my own experience uh, being on the board that um, uh, Pat Johnson has been always very interested in, in the development of the community or the lack of development in some cases or the reason not to develop in certain areas. And uh, I know that um, she has participated in, uh, in many different areas uh, and activities and projects in the town and has developed a, a very good sense of what the town needs and what the town should have. And, uh, and she works very hard. So uh, I'm glad that you actually, after your time as an alternate member, that you saw fit to consider being a full member of the CBA. That's, I don't see where it would be much more of a commitment, or would it? How do you view it? Well, I go to, until we had a full board, I, was, I had the opportunity to sit on a lot of cases because 
there were only six of us, and oftentimes somebody was missing or absent. So I had a lot of opportunities. But with the full board and the fact that I do come to all the meetings, I really would like the opportunity to vote on the cases. Uh, we have a very, very good board and a very good uh, chairman. Um, he's taught me a lot. <laughs> and I just would like the opportunity to be a voting member after having four years as an al alternate. And I also would like the opportunity to ask the board again, the board of selectmen. Um, you asked me the last time what I thought before I went on um, in 2008, what I thought the most difficult aspect of the Board of Appeals uh, is. And I will, at that time I said I thought the non-conforming issues were, but I really think the real deep-seated problem is the fact that we have a, a very um, haphazardly put together um, zoning bylaw book. And it's very confusing. It's very difficult for people to clearly understand, including the board, what <coughs> you know, what the law, what the bylaw says. I mean, we need to get it updated. We need to have it reflect modern technology. Uh, it would be a big benefit for this town and maybe prevent uh, future lawsuits if we had a a really good job done on revising the zoning bylaw. Okay. I, I just want to make... Uh, David? Oh, oh, no, okay. you go. Oh, I just wanted to say, um, when we had our joint meeting a few yes. months ago, I've been assured two of the things I came out of that meeting yes. uh, concerned about was just what you said, yes. and secondly, the enforcement issue yes. of your orders not being followed. And yeah. um, I've been assured by Julian that this is something that he is looking into um, <laughs> I, so I'm taking him at his word. It's something that will be resolved at some point, both the book and giving you some help Thank with you. enforcement issues. I can only tell you what I've been told, So, but he's right there, and I take him at his word. Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to say, um, uh, mostly about the, um, the bylaw, mm -hmm. that we talked about that yes, at the joint did. meeting, and that was a really uh, important topic um, for future okay. action. Uh, my, my question is, is that the Zoning Board of Appeals typically has a, uh, an opportunity to grant relief under certain circumstances for folks. And, and I wouldn't have said anything until Pat actually brought it up. Your, your avid interest in lack of development. Uh, so my question is, uh, can you look at and continue to look at um, uh, specific reliefs based on the, on the interpretation of what our current zoning bylaws are, not reading into those current bylaws. I mean, we all love, would love to see Falmouth the way it was maybe 40 years ago, except, uh, you know, times change and, and things change. Oh, yes. So, uh, uh, but, you know, we have to go by the law, speci specifically in the Zoning Board of Appeals. So that's my question. Yes, but we could have, all we can deal with is what the bylaw says. I mean, there is, many cases where a lawyer is presenting his interpretation of the bylaw because, you know, he's representing a client. The Board of Appeals really has to follow the book to the best of our ability as to what we think it, it, it says. Okay. Uh, I, I yep. just wanted to clarify that mm -hmm. term, lack of development. What I was really yes. referring to was 20 and 25 years ago. Yes. Before we, before all of the building in town really mushroomed, there was a group of people in North Falmouth that actually looked at the area in terms of um, areas that where development should occur and maybe areas where, they, where it should not occur. And it was really looking at the zoning because all along we're 28A. That's what I really meant was, was more planned growth rather than just um, let, letting yes. growth happen. Okay, all right. Have Any anything else questions? for the board? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, as this board knows, this is a regulatory appointment, and uh, we will not be meeting again. So I'd look for a motion to oh, put. We have another candidate, don't we? No, we only have two candidates, and we've already inter interviewed the That's other right, candidate. You're right. I forgot about uh, that. We interviewed okay. David Haddad okay. last week. I remember week. we okay. did. Yeah. 
So just as a reminder to everybody else that we had, David had that as well. So uh, I've looked for a motion to put both names in the nomination. I so move to put David Haddad and Patricia Johnson on nomination. Motion, and do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. I'll do a roll call vote. Uh, uh, Doug Jones first. Uh, Patricia Johnson. Okay. David Braga. Uh, Patricia Johnson. Uh, Pat Flynn. Patricia Johnson. Brent. Patricia Johnson. And uh, uh, just to keep everybody in the, in the mix, uh, I'll give a vote to David Haddad uh, to make sure that he continues to stay involved and, and work to the future. Pat, thank you very much. And you're now the uh, voting member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And as we move forward, we, I believe we would have one additional alternate position for those folks out there who are interested in that position. So we'll be advertising that. Thank you very much, both of you, for your service. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, is a conservation commission. First up is uh, uh, Tom Caval. <coughs> Sorry, we kept you last week waiting in uh, in limbo for the, for about three and a half hours. But, I think I, uh, I made mention that I thought we had all the fun. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, I, I'm never at a loss to see how good the community I live in. Uh, the depth of the applicants, both for the full-time positions and such. Um, my resume is a born high graduate, and then the rest of it's a school of hard knocks. Uh, I would like to, at this point, just make a couple of acknowledgments publicly. In the last three years, um, with the help of my family, who supported me in my appointment, for the compromises I made in family time, accomplishing that, and for my employer, who allowed me the extra time necessary during the day to be able to go to special hearings and things like that. In the last three years, um, I have been appointed to, elected to be vice chair. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. In that three years' time, I had missed two scheduled hearings, one for heart surgery and the other for a death in the family. Um, two special hearings, and that was just because I couldn't get out of work. Um, I take what I do very seriously. Um, I truly love my family. Um, I've been fortunate enough to work in construction since 1979. 98% of it in the town of Falmouth. Um, my children were born here. I, I plan on staying here until I am no longer here. Uh, all that put aside, I struggled to ask for this reappointment. Not because of the commitment and not because of the task in front of me. The litigious part of this which you are all well too familiar with, has been tough from time to time and, and stressful. Um, it's a regulatory board, and in, there have been times when we made decisions collectively as a board, and it came back at us, and it's frustrating. Uh, we thought we did the right thing, and on remand, we've been overturned. Other times, you know, it's flipped the other way. That's the only sour note in the whole orchestra. I can, I can deal with that. I just wanted to let you know, there is a the board that I sit on is deep. They're educated, they're impressive. I constantly learn when I'm there from all the other board members. Uh, I hope that I have educated some as well. And I really would like to be reappointed. Okay, I'll open it up to questions. We'll start with Pat first. Is that okay, uh, Brent? No questions, but I think it, having been on the Conservation Commission myself, I think Mr. Corvo has a, a very good grasp of, of the task in front of him, and I very much appreciate his willingness to serve again, so thank you. Uh, I was going to just say the same thing. Um, I, so I have no questions for you, Tom. Thank you. Doug? Uh, I just would reiterate what you said. I appreciate that you've considered 
before just automatically reapplying, saying you thought about it and said, "Yep, I'm, I'm ready to do it again," and I want to, you know, express my appreciation for your willingness to do that. Thank you. Um, I just want to make a couple of comments. Uh, I've been to some of your meetings and I've, I've watched quite a few. Um, I appreciate your level-headedness and your approach to finding a good reason why something can be done, not why something just can't be done. There are two ways to get to point B. And uh, um, we need to protect the resource, but we also need to find a way that we can accomplish a goal and that both sides can be happy. And I've seen that and I've seen you be able to do that and I appreciate you to continue to do that, whether it be in the full voting member spot or the alternate spot. Thank you. Thank that you. wasn't a question, it was a statement. Thank you. Okay, next up. Do we do uh, this as, since one's a full and one's an alternate, do we do this as two separate motions? Uh, no, we gotta do all the interviews first. There's another one. It's not on this list. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, That's just the incumbents that are up. Thank you. Yeah. I believe we have a Michael Powers. He's for the alternate, right? Michael Powers here. Okay. And then the other 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 uh, other candidate is Tom Vos. Would you like to come up and tell us a little bit about yourself? And why you'd want like to be on the Conservation Commission. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. My name is Tom Bose. I am uh, born and raised in Woods Hole, uh, down at Ganser Point. And my dad is a caretaker. I've worked for him for a long time on that estate, as well as other estates. Um, I've been swimming and sailing around here since before I could walk. Um, so it's a, a very valuable resource to me. And on the other hand, I think, like you were saying, there's a way that both parties can be happy and we can protect the ocean and, and get a lot accomplished. Um, and I think that makes me a good candidate. Uh, also, I'm self-employed now, so I can you know, schedule meetings and site <coughs> and stuff like that. And that's about it. I think I'll be a, a good addition if I'm voted in. Okay, we'll open it up to questions. Doug? Uh, and what what is your matter of business? You're saying you're self-employed? Yeah, uh, building and remodeling and design. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, David? How many, um, have you been to any of the meetings? I've been in one meeting. And I bought the book and I've been studying it. Okay, Brent? Okay. Um, now you understand this is a, a regulatory board as yep. opposed to a, a, um, an advisory board. Um, the, the Conservation Commission's role is, um, I'm struggling with the, for the word, it, as a regulatory board, it's a quasi-judicial body, that's the word I'm looking for, in that um, it, it issues decisions that can be challenged in court. And I guess uh, one of the questions I have is, um, your understanding, do you understand, I guess, that um, it, it's a situation where your personal opinions really have to be set aside in all aspects? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, I understand that. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, my question would be around uh, working in a group mm -hmm. and how, how you might handle conflict, particularly in a board like the Conservation Commission uh, members can have different opinions, as Brent alluded to, about a project and, and perhaps um, how they might see the outcome of that project. So how do you usually handle conflict in a group? Well, I definitely, I'm willing to listen to everyone's point of view. If I have a strong opinion, then, you know, I'm willing to listen and consider other people's, all options, but I'm, you know, if I have a strong opinion, I'll probably want to stick with that. But I'm, I'm always willing to, to negotiate and talk and you know, give and take. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I don't have any questions. I, I know Mr. Bose. Okay. Uh, we have actually two. We have a full-time member, and that would create an alternate member. 
So we have uh, two openings this evening. Um, the other candidate, uh, Michael Powers, uh, was seeking the full-time member's spot, but did not, yes? Would I be able to address for Mike Powers? Uh, no. No, no, not really. He, he didn't call and he was notified, so. Okay. And he would be, this would be for the full-time member's spot, the one, that, the voting member, so he wouldn't be leaving his current position. If you follow, yes. you both, you were both alternates. He, if I'm not mistaken, maybe. I think my father was a full-time. He was vice chairman. I'm He's sure. He's the full-time full member. member. You're the full-time member. What, what says on, on, is one one vacancy for a full-time member. Right. So this is a reappointment yes. for you, and then one full-time member in an alternate. Right. Okay, but she didn't put that on. No, she, she didn't. didn't put the other one on. No, she didn't. That's right. It's yeah. on the okay. sheet. Yes. It's in your packet on a spreadsheet and noticed in here that there is a um, as a result of Ted Durker's um, uh, resignation. resignation. That's right. correct. There's a single another so, position. So there's two full time. The, the Two current incumbent in an alternate position, and then another opening for a full member. No, no, no. We have. Is, can I ask you a question? Is 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 Mr. Durker uh, Durker a voting member or an alternate member? I believe he's a voting member. Yeah. It okay. Says full so yeah. then, that's what it says. Yeah. So then we have you and him as well, and then we have an applicant for you're both up for renewal. And then we have an applicant for the resignation of Mr. Durker, which expires no, on 6-30-15. His, right. his, his term would end on 6-30-15. So we have three, three positions two. and three applicants. Yes. So it sounds like uh, we have two. Two. 2015, though, it sounds like Mr. Durker did not choose to reapply That's for. Correct. Okay, so there is the what? Okay. All right. Okay. So, so, so we, have, we have three positions. No, all. He, two full and an alternate. Two full, one of whom is an incumbent, one is a is a vacant position, and then one alternate position. That's what we have. And what I see on the form here is that the alternate is reapplying to be the alternate. Right. He is not. Re, he is not applying to be, to be a full member. Right. It's correct. So, so we, we have an applicant to be a full member. Right. So we should vote on the Each one incumbent separately. first, mm -hmm. I would think. Well, we put both names, both names in, in nomination. the nomination for the yeah. voting members. Okay. If I could have a motion for the two voting members' uh, names. I move that we put Thomas Paul Carvo and Tom Vos both as uh, nominations for the two voting members of the Conservation Commission. The second. terms expired on 6-30-15. Motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Now I'll look for a motion for an alternate position for um, Michael Powers. Michael Powers. If you're in, if, so I would have a motion for Michael Powers to be renewed as an alternate member of the Conservation Commission with the term expiring on 6 30 15. I have a question. Yes. Um, we did not hear from Mr. Powers. Uh, no, we, we did not. There's nothing in the folder. Could we hear from Mr. Corvo? He said he might be able to say something. I'd just like to see an explanation as to why Mr. Powers didn't. Um, I don't have an explanation why he's not here. Okay. But I can just tell you that he has been sitting on the board for, I believe, close to a half a year. That's correct. And that's about all that I, I mm -hmm. he is familiar with what the board does. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, given that uh, Mr. Powers is an alternate, um, I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt and ask that we reschedule his interview. Because it would not, it would not create any issues with um, quorums or any other such thing with the commission if he was not reappointed. He, uh, there is one thing, though, that he did send in his desire to be reappointed. We, right. could, we could interview him, but that, that's fine. It's up to the board. I'd really like to be able to have him sit in at the next Conservation Commission meeting. We're not going to be yeah. meeting again for Until some time. Until the 15th. 
there, it, it's possible it since it's July, it's they may they may need a pro quorum. I'm reluctant because I'd like to find out why he's not here. I, if I'd like to give people the benefit of the doubt that he's not standing us up, I guess, and, and know that um, maybe there was a, a mix-up or some other such thing, but um, I would like to have the opportunity to, to, to interview him, so. But well, I'm one of five, so. I, I, I just, if, if he wanted to resign, he could possibly do that. He's the only candidate we have, so um, my, my inclination would be to reappoint him, but. Nancy, do you have something to say? Nancy Hayward, West Falmouth, Precinct 5. Um, I'm a frequent watcher of the Conservation Commission, and I, I think it would be appropriate if you interviewed him because I guess one question I would have is if he knew if Mr. Durker was not uh, reapplying when he applied uh, for the alternate uh, position. Uh, it, it, all right, I was going to make a comment that I thought he had been doing a very good job, but that may not be an appropriate comment. But. Uh, yeah. I think it would be appropriate if you interviewed. I mean, we've already appointed the two full-time members. We've taken a vote on that. So both of them have been appointed this evening. It would be just to renew his appointment as an alternate member. Mr. Chair, yes. uh, is this only the second year we've had the policy of interviewing incumbents? We assign, um, I guess I would love to give him the, the benefit of the doubt, saying until we really have this policy we've done for a few years, I can understand why incumbents might think all they need to do is let us know. I would encourage them to come. but. I know we've sent them the letter, but I would concur with your idea that we reappoint him for the alternate position. Um, if there's a way that we could invite him to come and talk to us anyway, but still to move forward with the process, maybe we can get, it, get both things done. Um, I'm not going to make a motion, so if I have a motion to put his name and nominate. Yes. Heather. Just as a matter of procedure, I, I did hear the board vote to put both names in nomination, but I'm not sure that I heard an actual vote to appoint. And I don't know if you have a record of that vote to appoint. Yes, we voted. Did you vote to appoint? I believe we, we voted did. Uh, two, two We votes? voted to appoint both Mr. Corvo and Mr. Vose to the full uh, to the full member positions. That's great. Is that yeah? Did. Okay. okay. Okay, so, so I would move to uh, appoint Mr. Powers, Michael Powers, to the alternate position, term ending 6-30-15. Second. All right, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Yes? Sure, I'd like to thank you for the reappointment, and um, I look forward to working with Mr. Bose, and in three years' time, We'll smile again. <laughs> Thank you for your service. We appreciate Thanks, it. Sir. And I hope your family continues to be supportive. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, appointments are, are, are done at this time. We do have a list of vacancies uh, that we will be publishing. Uh, if you'd like me to read these down, I'd be happy to do so. It's up to the board. We have a... a openings on the Affirmative Action Committee, Affordable Housing Committee, the Assessors Board, the Beach Committee. Um, well, it says that we have an opening, but that's through 630.13, so I think we've filled that uh, position. Bikeways Committee, Cable Advisory Committee, Cape Cod Commission, Cape Cod Light Compact, Coastal Management Committee, uh, Council on Aging, Cultural Council, Design Review Committee, Disabilities Commission, Energy Committee, Historic District Committee, Historic uh, Commission, Human Services, the Retirement Board, Solid Waste Advisory Committee, Substance Abuse Committee, Town Building Committee, Transportation Management Committee, and the Zone, well, the Zoning <coughs> Board of Appeals we filled this evening. But uh, those are the, the issues, the areas where we have vacancies out there for folks. So. I just want to say the uh, Cape Light Compact is an alternate position. We have a full member on that's the con. Correct. That's Ron Zweig. 
I also think I read something where the retirement board appointed someone last week to that Bob Rittenauer's position mm -hmm. that was vacant. That, that's no. the selectman's appointment. So no, it's a selectman's appointment. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that appointment has to come from the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. So if they did, they did it in error. Yeah, I better check. Um, if you We've could check that for we'll that. We'll check. Go ahead. Um, I have a question. The Transportation Management Committee does not have a quorum at present, correct? They don't That's have correct. a committee. No, nothing. So they haven't. Can we perhaps discuss, and you know, at times we've, we, we reappoint, I think, without discussion, but certainly I think there's an opportunity here to look at what it is the, the commission does or did do and ask ourselves if it's worthwhile keeping this commission and whether or not we want to simply dissolve it and move on. Um, oftentimes there's complaints that we can't fill positions in town, but then again, we've got upwards of 50 or 60 committees and uh, uh, three, 400 volunteers. Perhaps it's not that we can't fill the positions, maybe it's just that we have too many committees and um, we should probably slim things down a little bit. And yes. here's an opportunity, I think, to um, perhaps at a future date put this on the agenda and look at what it is that the, the committee does and uh, ask ourselves if it can be done by another committee or if there's an opportunity here to just dissolve it. And I wholeheartedly agree with you. Uh, Mr. Suso and I have had some conversation about trying to maybe merge some of these committees. I mean, we have some committees that have five openings, four openings, three openings, uh, uh, six. Uh, six openings. I mean, these committees surely don't have quorums. And sometimes uh, when you start a committee, you know, it's useful. We don't have a sunset clause on them, I guess is the best way to put it. So maybe I could, uh, the board could assign <laughs> You know, some suggestions to the town manager's office that uh, maybe you could see the appropriate way to merge some of these committees as we are looking to merge some departments in this this town uh, and the reporting to to the town manager so maybe we could look at uh, some of these these groups as well <coughs> happy to do so mr. chairman thank you great suggestion Brent thank you uh, next up is there right ahead. yes go right ahead Thank you very much, Matt McNamara, Zoning Board of Appeals. If you would, you appointed uh, an associate member to a voting member, so uh, we do need an associate member now for a term ending June 30th, 2016. So if you would add that to your list, because you just made our associate oh, to a voting member. Right. Okay. And while I have the lectern, I'm just going to uh, recognize Dennis Murphy, happens to be your nephew, uh, who was an outstanding uh, and valuable contributor to this town through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, somebody that has worked through the transition from a three-member board to a five-member board, uh, and he certainly will be missed by our board, and uh, I'm sure the community owes him quite a deal. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I, I, I personally have thanked him. I encouraged him to run again, but he does have a young family and had some obligations at home, and I, I know, in fact, uh, uh, just as Tom said tonight, uh, a lot of times we have to weigh those issues and we might see him again at some point in time. Thank you. Okay, next up is request for extension of hours, Grill 327, 327 Gifford Street. Um, just uh, before we get going, I want to make a disclosure on the holder of an all alcoholic seasonal liquor license. Hi, good evening. Hi. Want to introduce yourself? Michelle Grogan. Okay, and tell us what you're looking for. Um, we're just looking to extend our liquor license from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. Um, we have, we are next to the Kuna Messet. We have people coming over from the wedding parties, and uh, we we can't serve them at past 12. So we're just looking to extend for an hour because the weddings go till 12. Okay. And we're also looking for um, Sunday mornings. We I have people coming in looking for mimosas. Don't know if we can serve them at 10:30 instead of 12. So you're looking to uh, your current, you're looking to change your current operating hours Monday through Saturday, from to, to from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. That's yes. what's on here. Is that correct? Yes. And then on Sunday from 10:30 to 1 a.m. That's what you have on here. Okay. And we're not talking operating. We're talking liquor license because you operate. Right. 
Right. That's correct, right? Yes. That's what you want? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure that that's what you requested. <laughs> yes. I mean, because you could go earlier during the week, but but 11, 11 a.m. is what you're asking for. 11 a.m. during the week is yes. Okay. It's just Sunday that okay. we have people coming in and we can't serve them until noon. No, we don't We don't have this on tonight's application. Okay. And so we, no, uh, not the hours, but the entertainment. And I think you do have an entertainment license there. The entertainment we're leaving, I think, as is. As is. Okay, yes. I just wanted to make sure because it's not part of this application. Right. This okay. So um, does the board have any questions? No. Any public comment? I look for a motion then to change the op hours of operation from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, Monday through Saturday and from 10.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. on Sunday. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, yeah, I have it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Keep have in mind, night. you still have to be out of there by 1.30, so. Absolutely. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you. All right, next up is request for sign variance, T-Ticket Market, Inc., one, uh, 126 T-Ticket Highway. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Brian Anderson, I'm the owner of T-Ticket Market, T-Ticket Highway. I'm here to request two sign code variances, one under Section uh, 180, 184.30 and 184.10, and we'll get to them. You're probably in in your packet is a letter from Building Commissioner Ladio Gore, where we were cited for a sign that we had up had for some years, and it has been determined that it was not eligible under the bylaw. The first section of the bylaw that I'm asking for a uh, variance from is the sandwich board section of the bylaw. Is section 184-30, section D, as cited by the building commissioner. Basically, the size and the distances are not what I'm asking for, but uh, the building commissioner determined, according to his letter, that beer is not a perishable food within the meaning of the bylaw. And it's one quick sentence. I'd like to read it. The sign shall advertise perishable goods for sale only, such as food goods or a menu. When I was first reading this, it was on my iPad, so I just highlighted the word beer and hit define, and I did the same thing to food. The definition of food was any nutritious substance that people or animals eat or drink or that plants absorb in order to maintain life and growth. Because beer is nutritious and because people do drink it, I have a hard time understanding how somehow these few words that I just read you, that there is another intent. Now, verbally, I was told that the definition in the bylaw uh, prohibits it and that it's food only. The last time we were here for another uh, sign code hearing, there was discussion amongst the selectmen. Some people said it should be a perishable at 72 hours. It should be a refrigerated perishable. Maybe it should be a perishable but not plants. I'm here to request a variance this evening, but I don't want the same variance that was issued the evening before. I'd like a condition on my variance. And the condition is, if town meeting changes this bylaw section, my variance goes away because my recommendation is the selectmen should take advantage of the sign code committee, the design review committee. One of the purposes in the bylaw of the design review board is to periodically review existing sign bylaws and advise the board of selectmen to desirable modifications. I think just the conversation and confusion at the last meeting and the lack of understanding of this bylaw, it should go to the Design Review Board and probably a recommendation should be made to town meeting. Then town meeting will say up or down. They do want beer, they don't want beer, they want it for plants, they don't want it for plants, whatever it is. But any variance that you issue me this evening, I don't want a variance. Most variances you issue go forever. When town meeting changes the bylaw, 
your variance will still survive. Stipulate in this variance that if town meeting votes to change it, I'd like to go along with whatever town meeting wants. I believe the sign goes along with what town meeting wrote and voted, but I'm asking for the variance because it's the only way I have of trying to figure out how it has been defined that beer is not food. The second variance is a little more difficult. It's under section 184, section 10. Like the chairman at the last meeting, it goes back a few years, and I can't remember, but sometime in the 1970s or 80s, the town changed the sign code bylaws. It is a very short 44 words, standard brand names, logos, symbols, slogans of advertised products or services shall be dis displayed only if that brand comprises more than 25% of the dollar value of the sales of the premises, as declared by an affidavit by the business owner and manager. Now in the 70s and 80s, I owned a store in East Falmouth, and most stores had 15, 20, 30 foot long Pepsi, Coke, Budweiser, Schlitz signs. On the very end of it, they print the name of your business. The pizza shops had them, the stores, retail stores had them, the restaurants had that type of sign, the plastic sign with the lights behind them. And the town decided they didn't want the name brands on the building signs. And town meeting voted it. And eventually you saw most of those signs disappear in the community. Personally, I don't think it's a bad thing. But the way the law is written, section 184.10 doesn't stipulate that this applies only to the building sign. It applies to every sign in town. Every sign. Sandwich board signs, neon signs, window signs, wall signs, real estate signs. Brand name isn't 25% of your total sales, it's illegal. This could be very detrimental to the independent business person. The chain store, the franchise, the multinational has less of a problem. They have multi million dollar budgets. As a small independent business person, I tie my name to brand names. I don't have a multi million dollar budget. So I tie my name to the brand name Big Game when I advertise the lottery. I tie my name to Coca-Cola or Pepsi when I advertise soda. When I advertise milk, I advertise Gorillac milk. I tie my name to that brand name. It's very important to us to be able to use that in our window signs and our neon signs. I think neon signs would be the absolute proof that this was never the intent of town meeting, nor was it ever up until now enforced this way. We've all driven down the road and seen a neon sign at a liquor store in this town that didn't just say beer, it has a brand name, Corona, Budweiser. But now we're going to enforce this bylaw that's been on the books, I don't know, 20, 25 years, as it is written, which means no brand names. So I'd like to, because I believe I'm the only business person that's been cited under this, I'd like to ask for a variance, but then again, tell the selectmen condition it. If town meeting changes section 184.10, let my variance disappear. And whatever town meeting wants 184.10 to be in the future, I'll comply with. <clears throat> but to stop advertising all brand names at this time, and to be the only business person in town that's been cited under this, I think is unfair. The problem is, at least I've been told, that is a complaint-driven enforcement mechanism. I've been verbally and written and told about this section of bylaw three times in four and a half years. So evidently, the only complaint the building commissioner ever receives is about brand names on my business. Now, going down the road the other day, I saw brand names of tires on a tire shop. I saw brand names of milk, soda, and cigarettes at convenience stores. I saw a, hands, a hair cutting salon that had a brand name of the products they sell. The hardware store had a brand name of the paint they sell. Retail stores that sell propane, you know, the returnable tanks had the brand name of the propane. These brand names are everywhere in town. Again, my recommendation is that the selectmen please ask Design Review Committee to review this and make a recommendation as soon as possible to town meeting 
of what we really want to do in the town. But to go without advertising brand names, if I have to put on my sign a name brand spiced rum rather than putting Captain Morgan spiced rum is unfair. Especially when it has been insinuated it's not going to be enforced anywhere else unless there's a complaint. And I don't know if the administrator did have the meeting that you recommended last week, but if he did have the, I, if there's any input he could take in what direction the building commission is taking on this, asking for the two variances with stipulations that they die if there are amendments was the only approach I could, I thought I could take. But if, if there was something that came out of discussions they may have had, I'd love to hear them. I went to the selectman's office earlier today to ask for anything that was in writing in the packets, and they said there was nothing available to read. Well, I don't think that's, the, if, if you requested that there was a memo dated uh, June 25th, which I believe today was from Eladio Gore in regard to, to variances and things of that nature. Um, I, I actually did request it, and I left my telephone number. If anything came in late, I asked to be called okay. so I could be prepared. Well, in fact, if, if that's the case, I apologize on behalf of the town manager's office. Uh, you should have, been, uh, should have been given this information. Before I open it up to questions, let me just summarize. You're looking for two different variances. One variance is the name brand variance. Mm -hmm. And I understand the scope of the variances you're looking for is that if town meeting were to define that, that particular name brand variance, it would go away. Mm -hmm the variance would go away. The other variance, again, you're looking for? Section 184, Section 30, I believe it is. Which is for the variance for? That, that is the variance to, under, according to the letter dated the 5th, the building commissioner has declared that beer is not a perishable food. Okay, so on a sandwich board side, so you would meet the criteria of all the additional sandwich board information? Not asking for any other variance so other than just the beer, okay. perishable food. All right. All right. Um, just to Mr. Chairman, could I, yep. could I clarify? I, I think there's only been one violation notice issued, and that was regarding the a sandwich board sign at this location. Uh, I don't believe any other violation notices have been issued for any other signs at this business location, merely the sandwich board alone. So I guess I just want to clarify that for the board. Um, in, in, let me ask the question, in, it's just for the sandwich board sign, does it say anything about the sandwich board? I don't have that one in this packet yet. Can you read well, that it, for us? It, ref it re refers to section 18430D uh, of the sign code and, and the, the clarification that we received today from uh, Building Commissioner Ladio Gore was that uh, this relates strictly to sandwich board advertising. And uh, so I guess I wanted to be to clarify if a variance is being asked for from this board for something for which a violation has not been issued, I, I want to be uh, cautioning the board on that. Um, so you there's only been a notice issued for a violation of a sandwich board sign. The June 5th does refer to both parts of the sign code violation. Your understanding is Ladio, that the Enforcement is only going to be on the sandwich board. Correct. That's my understanding. Right. But could I, Mr. Could Gore, I ask you just let me just let okay. me finish the board. But Mr. Gore also does bring up, in fact, the name brand because board. that is on the sandwich board. Right. So we're just talking about the sandwich board, but but some of the arguments relate to signs elsewhere on the business premises, which have not been cited as being in violation. So I just want to caution the board that that argument is only applying to the sandwich board, based upon upon the fact that that is the only sign that has been uh, noticed with a violation. Mr. Chairman. Go right ahead. I have been before the board before for a variance, before I even built my building. I don't come before the board only because violations have been issued. In that case, I didn't want to build big glass walls that have window signs, so I asked for a variance for a different type of sign, and it was granted. This evening I'm before you because the Building Commissioner, Ladio Gore, has stipulated that this section does apply to other than building signs, wall signs. There is nothing in the 14 or 15 pages of sign code bylaw 
that in any way indicates that this 184 section 10 only applies as the administrator has said to sandwich boards 184 section 10 is a free standing section of the bylaw once I have been notified of that that these are not allowed I have a perfectly legal sign out there that's interchangeable letters if I put a brand name on it I'm knowingly in violation because I have been so notified that 184 section 10 exists and I'm sorry I personally hate hip pocket bylaws and what this is this is a bylaw that's kept in the hip pocket when I question the question of the perishable the next letter I received was a hip pocket bylaw and you get hit off the head with this section and also this and this hip pocket bylaw isn't enforced anywhere else hasn't been enforced anywhere else but now you know it's here and it is here and there is nobody that has made a determination in any way mean or manner that it only applies to section 18430 and I would like the administrator to somehow explain to me why this bylaw it only applies to sandwich boards in one section 430 I've, I've read this several times I can't understand that connection okay. uh, if I may um, in the in the memorandum from the building commissioner he that's says, the one I never received did right. you have a copy I might be able to read he states that you currently have a permit for six signs four wall signs two per a previous variance and of these six signs two per a previous variance two where no variance is required and two freestanding signs is that your understanding that is my understanding that what you have now so the issue here is a sandwich board sign no, the issue, the issue we're the talking issue, about no, now. Excuse me. Well, no, just let me finish. Um, so what you're asking for is a variance related to a sandwich board sign, which you interchangeably use for products that are perishable under the definition of the bylaw, such as garlic milk or Budweiser. Yes, I use it for bean, okay. I use it for bean town coffee also. And you use it for other things. But when name. you use it for a brand name, which is or a name of a product that is does not meet the definition of perishable under the bylaw that's where the violation occurs and that's where you are requesting a variance to be able to use that sandwich board to advertise Budweiser is that your understanding is that why you're here I consider it to be a perishable and it is a food right. I don't understand the intent okay. the, the second reason I am here is once I have been cited and been made aware of section 18430 which has to do with brand names that section of the bylaw does not only apply to sandwich boards it applies to all signs in the community once I'm made aware of that as building commissioner I think the administrator is saying well I can ignore and use it on my other signs my window signs and my freestanding signs and I, and I can ignore the notice those and I only have to think about the notice for the sandwich board there's nothing in the bylaw that says it applies to one at all it applies to everything in the bylaw it's a separate freestanding section so I, I would just like to have an exemption so that when I change the sign to big game next week I don't have to come back again I've been at this four and a half years right uh, Mr. Gore does mention in his letter, June 5, 2012, to Mr. Anderson, he says, furthermore, the sign code 18410 states that products shall be displayed only if that brand, this is the brand name issue, uh, da, 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 you, you may wish to appeal this decision. It seems that we're here on both counts. Great. Yeah. Just to, on um, the sandwich board issue, is this the si sandwich board sign? No. That we're talking about, or is that? Is there? A no, that's a permitted sign. That's a permitted sign. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. No. Good. So okay. um, in, but but uh, after this letter, I wouldn't be allowed to put a brand name on. It. I understand that. I uh, just just just, just a little institutional memory here. Um, again, a lot of this 
interpretations are subjective. We keep talking once again about what is perishable, but this is a hindsight definition because it's not actually in the bylaw. Um, and I think that we need to charge the design review committee, which I don't even know has a quorum because they have they're one of the committees that have three or four vacancies right now. <laughs> so um, we need to charge the design review committee to actually come up with uh, a little bit more defined definition. In regard to the brand name, uh, you know, sometimes you do things and then they, what you did evolves over the years. Uh, my first job out of, out of college, I worked for Anheuser-Busch and I worked for them for some 14 years. And uh, that is in fact how the brand name scenario came about. What we would do with the company, and this was a national policy, is we would pay, you were a brand new business, we would pay for your sign out front. Except we would take three quarters of the sign with the Anheuser-Busch logos or our products, and that's what Pepsi did, that's what Coca-Cola did, and then we'd put Joe's Place on there. And that's what this remedy of the, of the brand name in the sign code bylaw was fixing. But now it has evolved to fix Take other things, the interpretation. It's kind of like going around the campfire. When you say something, it gets, by the time it gets to the other end, it gets somewhere else. Uh, I think if we all looked at supermarkets, looked at everything, what a brand name is, uh, we'd all um, understand that brand names are part of our life. It is everything we do day in and day out. And uh, I think the design review committee or the sign code bylaw addressed the idea of billboards when they changed the, the in fact the brand name scenario but that's my personal interpretation I think it's very reasonable to go to the design review committee and ask them to make some changes on this and come back with a with a warrant article for the spring or fall town meeting and uh, something to present to us that we would put forward Again, they, they recommend that, but those are my two cents worth there. Go ahead, Pat. But they only define perishable as applying to sandwich boards, not applying to a wall sign. I mean, according to the way I read this, you could perishable only applies to the sandwich board that you put out front, but you could put a brand name on the wall. No, 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 brand name's under a different section of the bylaw. Right. Two separate, two separate I'm sorry, sections I don't mean any. brand, I meant our oh, brand name is under a different it's a, So brand name is for everything. It's okay. not just for sandwich boards. It's for everything. For everything. But perishable, perishable is only is for sandwich boards. Right, to, for that specific. And we're not talking about a sandwich board. Yes, we are. That's all we're here for tonight is. So we're talking about a sandwich board that advertises Budweiser? Budweiser, but what Mr. Anderson is afraid of is now that he's been cited for the brand name on a sandwich board that he would have to come in, come in to compliance with every sign on his property, meaning his window signs that happen to say Budweiser, because he's already been cited for a brand name violation. So, is it within our jurisdiction to actually even cover brand name signs wider than his building? I mean, no, we, we, we're here, he's here tonight for him. Right, I understand. What, I, I think right. I understand what he's asking, but I think he's also asking a bigger question that the ideal situation would be we as the board could say, until this is resolved, that bylaw is in abeyance because we want to get some direction. He was trying to be honest. And he says if he understands the law, he should take down all those signs, as should 93 other stores in town. And he's saying, can the board do anything about this? I'm not sure we can. Well, what we could do is we could issue a variance like he's saying this evening and send to the design review committee uh, uh, a letter and ask them to change these, uh, these particular bylaws and bring them back to the board for presentation to town meeting. Uh, he's looking for a variance until that's changed. Uh, so if town meeting changes it and they want no Budweiser signs, I lose the variance and take it down. Okay. That's, that's I, I would have two motions then. My first motion would be I would move that we not grant the variance for the sandwich board. I just don't think it fits the standard that Brent mentioned last time of undue hardship um, 
Hold on a minute. Yeah, anyone can ask, I just, just FYI, anyone can ask for a sandwich board sign if it meets the criteria, and he, that, that was my question to him. Does it meet all the criteria except the word perishable? And he has a, the definition. He's willing to make the sandwich board within the 15 feet. He's, I understand, but I, I think I, I would move, move that we not, so, not grant the waiver in support of the uh, Building Commissioner's determination of perishable. I'm going to second that because I have a problem granting variances like this because once you grant one variance, it's only specific to one individual and it doesn't deal with all the other people who have the same issue. If we grant um, Brian a variance, then anybody else would be coming in here. Maybe we should look at it a little bit differently. Uh, I don't know whether it's uh, hold it in abeyance or have a a brief moratorium until the uh, design review committee can come up with something that that where they meet with some of the business owners and come up with something but I I'm not comfortable granting a variance because as I, I agree with Brent a variance has to be related to a hardship and we've granted variance of people whose businesses are um, s far enough away from the curb that people can drive by and not even see them and we've uh, granted a hardship to them to put a sandwich board out front so people know that they're even there because you wouldn't see that, that their business was there. I think we did that for a business on uh, 28 over in T-Ticket for the first year because they had just started their business and no one knew they were there. So there, there was a clear hardship. I don't see this as really a hardship. I see it as a problem more than a hardship that needs to be addressed by the Design Review Committee. That's um, my my sorry. my point is that uh, occasionally in government you have to get the attention of folks, and the only way we're going to get this bylaw reviewed and get the attention to bring it forward is to create and to, to issue a variance that would in fact go away. That that would be my intent, and, and that would get the attention. He's willing to allow that to go away based off of what town meeting says. My second motion would be to, to grant the variance for the brand name sign, and because I do want that issue to be resolved by the sign review committee. I think that there are two different issues. And but the only the only word give you an illustration. Uh, the brand name he can't even put put uh, on his sandwich board sign Gorelick Milk. No, but he couldn't put it on his freestanding sign that changes letters. But, but he sh did he. But, if, if he meets all of the criteria for a no. sandwich board. You have to read the whole bylaw. It's, it's, it's 25 years of amendment after no, amendment, amendments of the amendments. The freestanding sign that changes letters, you can, what I'm saying is I will move variants on the brand name sign and you could put garlic on that. That's not your sandwich board sign you're talking about. The correct? sandwich board sign, that what I'm asking for is for the selectman to give me a variance on the 18410, uh, excuse me. 30 because the present law states that the sign shall be advertised perishable goods for sale only such as food goods and I don't think either the building commissioner in this very belated memo that he gave to you the letter to me or <coughs> any conversation or every other evidence here has in any way proved that beer is not a food now at the last meeting I was at the selectman and I'm shocked that Selectman Flynn doesn't, doesn't like variances. We issued a variance for bait to be on a sandwich board under a bylaw that says it's for food. So I guess it's food for bass. You know, we're stretching it here. I've asked for a variance that will go away when this goes to town meeting. Right. Just so we can get the issue resolved rather than dealing with it for another four and a half years. Okay. We're, we have a motion on the floor, what? but you, yeah. you have a motion in a second. He, so we're taking discussion. Brett? Um, you know, we were here last time, <laughs> and I, I said it, and pun forgiven or whatnot, but uh, we opened a can of worms, and, um, and Mr. Murphy, it I was agree. It <laughs> I, I agree with you that sometimes we need to do things to get attention, and I must say that uh, Mr. Anderson has twice now made some very eloquent and reasonable arguments. Um, for years, I've, we've seen variances come before this board, and I've taken issue with 
um, the, the problems with the sign code. Um, for every variance that we hear, I've no doubt there are probably many that never come before us because somebody gets a letter from the building commissioner that says you're, you're in violation and you can't appeal this if you want and people say, you know, I don't want to go through the trouble. Um, the idea that it's a complaint driven process is, and I can understand why, but it, it's also one that's ripe for um, abuse because there are brand name signs in Stop and Shop's window. And I doubt anybody's complaining about Stop and Shop. And even if they did, do we really think that we would want to be on the front page of, of, of the, the, the Boston Globe because our building commissioner is issuing violations to a multinational corporation? There's got to be some reasonable uh, litmus test supplied, and I think the sign code doesn't do that. Um, Point well taken, Mr. Anderson. Worms are food now, but beer is not. Um, the pilgrims brought beer with them on the, on the Mayflower because it was a source of calories and a source of vitamin B. So whatever I may have said in the past, folks, uh, I'm, just forget about it because I guess everything is different, and so it is tonight. I'm going to go along with these variance requests because otherwise nothing's going to change. I've been arguing the case for four years now that we shouldn't be passing these variances, but nobody's listening to me in that regard. So I guess I'll, I'll try the other tact and approve every variance that comes our way. Um, and the last point I'd like to make is that the, the Design Review Committee, um, I don't know if they can meet, I don't know if they'd have a quorum based on the number of individuals that we need to appoint to that. But Article 9, Section C99, of the town charter states that we shall appoint a bylaw revision committee on a on a regular basis. Um, we're a little overdue to do that. I think Mr. Uh, Braga has mentioned that. Mr. Chairman, I would respectfully request that in July we advertise for and begin the process of appointing a bylaw revision committee. Certainly, the the sign code is one area that's in desperate need of, of a review. Um, there are some other parts of the the bylaws which also need review, and I think. Um, when we talk about uh, zoning changes, I don't, that may be under a separate section because the planning board generally deals with that. But certainly there are opportunities and certainly work that, that could be done. Um, so with that, thank you for your, your time. And Mr. Anderson, you have my support. Um, and and with, we'll, we'll pick up that issue right after we finish. We have a motion in a second. Any other further discussion on, on Doug's motion. Would he please state his motion again? Um, <laughs> actually, in deference to Mr. Putnam's points, which I think very well take, I, I actually would prefer to withdraw my motion. Okay. So you withdraw the second then, or did you want to make another motion? The motion withdrawn. So are we looking to uh, take any action, meaning uh, Mr. Anderson has asked for uh, variances on two separate counts. One is for for the definition of the word perishable on his sandwich sign, and he has also asked for a variance for name brands on his sandwich sign and i.e. on his property, advertising specific branded items. And those variances would have a sunset clause after they're taken up by town meeting. So, which town meeting? Any town meeting? If, it, if it, and when they're ever changed, okay. there's two sections. Yep. Do we want? Do you want one or separate motions? Oh, I, doesn't matter. I mean, it, we could address them both in one motion. That's fine with me. Well, then I would make the motion that we uh, define beer as a perishable product under 18430, and that we grant. Um, 18430. Sorry. Is it 10 or 30? You're right. 30 184 30. 30. And that um, we grant the variance uh, for that, and that we grant the variance for section 18410. Second. Okay, so there's a motion and a second on that. Any further comment from the board? The only comment I would yep. make is that I don't think that we're really in a position to define the, make that definition of perishable under the bylaw. Just a comment. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Um, any public comment, or do I dare? <laughs> Come right up, sir. Like you, Mr. Murphy, I have been in the beverage business, the brewery business with uh, Miller High Life. And if you ever had skunky beer, you know what perishable means. Thank you.
Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so motion is second. Any further public comment? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Nice to have it. Thank, thank you for your time. Um, thank you very much. In, um, in the effort of sharing power um, and uh, under my chairmanship, I would uh, like to task Mr. Putnam for putting together the, uh, um, the bylaw review uh, scenario. And I think we can, uh, actually it's been something that David Bragger has been championing for a while. If the both of you can work on it, that together. Uh, that would be a great uh, okay. way to move forward sure. and maybe we could take certain sections at a time rather than accomplish the entire set of town bylaws maybe the first one would be in fact uh, um, to to, re to come forward with a, a proposal to appoint a committee that would do the sign code bylaw first uh, yeah I wanted to mention there are two distinct right so, I, yeah. I, okay and usually the bylaws come under the purview of town council but that's well, town council Just would some, be part of that committee right. in some form or fashion. Okay, next up uh, is a vote to authorize uh, the use of $20,000 from the AFC mitigation funds to pay wastewater treatment uh, facility groundwater discharge permit appeal related expenses. Mr. Suso, do you want to explain this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, board members are in uh, possession of a Memorandum from our wastewater superintendent, uh, Jerry Potamus, and uh, Jerry indicates uh, uh, a request uh, for an amount of $20,000 for various additional expenses related to the town's uh, wastewater treatment plan appeal. The board will recall that in the past, uh, several months ago, you authorized some funds to uh, cover the cost of that appeal, recognizing that had, it had not yet been concluded. Uh, we've now essentially brought that to closure on the legal end, uh, and we know that we have uh, the need for some expenses in excess of $14,000 beyond what has been authorized uh, and for which we would request the board support for additional funding. Uh, beyond that, we have some engineering-related expenses that we anticipated. Uh, again, the total of the two we do not think will exceed $20,000. Uh, Jerry uh, Potamus is here this evening. If there would be any questions about nuances or details of those amounts, uh, but otherwise we would ask the board if you would so consider to cover this as we do not believe it should be appropriately be a general fund expense. Yes, David. Just a general question. Julie, what was the um, current balance of that account, AFC money? Do you, you know? Uh, I don't have that with me, but I think Mr. Potamus may, if okay. I might have him come up, uh, select from Braga and Mr. Chairman. Jerry Thomas, uh, based on a pretty good recollection, I think it's a little less than $2 million. Okay. The AFC mitigation. Thank you. Okay. Any one have a, want to make a motion? I, I move that we um, authorize the town manager to, um, util to use uh, $20,000 from the AFC mitigation funds. Do have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, I have it. Okay, next up is to approve minutes of uh, June the 11th. I have one correction myself on page two. Uh, this was uh, under uh, the anchor ale house, one under David Straits. Um, I'd like you to add that the applicant admitted violating his current license by uh, extending, hours. extending his hours of uh, to entertainment to 1130. Didn't he go to 1230, he said, or 1250? I thought he said 1130. 1130. But, but it, no, we could just leave it as admitted to violating his current license. Okay. Also, Mr. Chairman, under that same, uh, under, see the name Robert Cunha? Yes. The actual spelling is C-U-N-H-A. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Any other errors, omissions, corrections? Do I have a motion to approve? I move approval of the minutes uh, of June 11th with those corrections. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Next up is uh, executive session minutes. 
of uh, June the 11th, and this would be for not not to release the not to release. release. I move approval of the minutes of, of executive session of June 11th and not to release. Motion and do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, this brings us to the summary of actions. We'll get on the list. Uh, I'd like to hold number one proclamation, Falmouth Amateur Radio. We'll have uh, um, someone read that. Doug, do you want to read this one? Okay, well, when we get to that, okay. Yes, Next would uh, approve memor memorandum of understanding, Falmouth Commodores. Approve request for one day liquor license, I'll hold that. Approve request for seven day liquor licenses, uh, Seacoast Shores Association, 630, 71, 74 to 7812. Uh, we're gonna hold that one. Approve request for a special event, uh, MBL 4th of July Parade. Approve request for a wedding permit. Ted Bump, Old Silver Beach on 630-12. Re approve request for Sunday Entertainment License. Mashby Wampanoag Pow Wow on 7-1. Uh, approve request for a one-day liquor license. Falmouth Artists Guild Fundraiser. I'll hold that. Uh, vote to accept donation of the Church of Messiah. Number 11, approve NSTAR petition to install underground conduit David's Neck Road. And then number 12, approve request for one day liquor license found with the Historical Society fundraiser. We'll hold that too, please. So I'm looking for a motion for 3, 6, 7, 8, 10, and 11. So move. Motion. And do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Number one, approve request for a special event, uh, Falmouth uh, Fridays Ar Ar Artisan Market. Um, is the applicant here this evening, Patricia? Yes. Okay. How you doing? You want to tell us a little bit about sure. your event and, and how many days it is? And I'd be happy to. So, um, I'm Trish Kozeb, I'm from Katuit, and I'm here with Sue Zimmerman and um, Ed Goldberg from Falmouth. And um, this is the third year we've asked for permission to be at Marina Park to do a weekly artisan outdoor market on Fridays, hence the name Falmouth Fridays. Um, <clears throat> and it's a very small little market. Um, we have about 12 local artisans that come in. And um, it's been, you know, it's been wonderful. And we feel as though we're adding a lot of value to Falmouth because we do a lot of marketing, uh, social media, emails, whatever. We're bringing in uh, quite a few customers to the Falmouth area um, that wouldn't normally be here. They're coming in to see us and they go into town and shop and eat or whatever. And, um, and this year we decided to do something a little bit different. We wanted to give something back to the town. So we've decided to donate $1,000 to the service center um, at the end of the season. Okay. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Certainly not. Um, how many vendors do you have? About anywhere from 10 to 14. So okay. we want to keep it small. Okay. So it's like you, a farmer's market. And you call them local. How many are actually Falmouth? Uh, probably um, close to half are Falmouth and the rest are on the Cape. So okay. we have the sandwich and Katu and, and whatnot. Okay. Once in a while we have a visiting person, I'll say, coming from off Cape, but I discourage that. I really want local people. Okay. And you are a for-profit business? Um, we are, but this year we're giving back all of it to the service center because we do not. So I'm an artisan as well, and these two are artisans. So that's why we did it, because we wanted to do something, because we had customers in the area. Okay. Um, we used to run a market called Mashby Open Markets. Some people might be familiar with, and that closed down. So we decided to do it here instead. Um, so all of the profits are going to go back to the town and the service center. Okay. Um. I mean, you're basically running this every Friday of the oh, summer. Oh, I season. forgot. Yeah, five, so five Fridays. We we stop um, the Friday after the road race because things. We went to the end of August the first year and it got very quiet. So we don't go to the end of August anymore. So we do all four Fridays in July, and then August 13th because we never get permission for the road race uh, Friday. So we just we're not we're not there on the road race. We'd love to be. So if you'd let us, we'd love it. But I, we understand that. In the past, you said no because there's a lot more traffic coming into the town. All right. Um, uh, just a conversation to the board. I, I 
tend to have a little problem with things like this that are every week they become a, a business operation and uh, they compete with our local businesses who pay taxes who employ our local folks granted we do have artisans that create products here in town but uh, not only the fact does it put stress on our, our park but uh, it also um, takes away business from some of those merchants on Main Street that might sell all those same type of wares, those same type of crafts, those same type of artists um, on a once in a while type of basis. I, uh, my personal opinion is I don't have a problem with it, but I often do hear um, merchants on Main Street that, that will, will say, you know, I'm competing against someone who's not put paying for a light bill, who's not paying these type of, uh, of scenarios. Uh, uh, but uh, I've opened it up to questions and answers from questions from the board. Yep. Pat. Well, I, you know, Heather and I have been meeting um, with the with the with the village association, with um, Mark Sofong, and and with also people from the farmers market. And I don't know why we couldn't expand those discussions because it relates to the same thing that you're thinking of. And um, if you think that this interf this is Marine Park, I understand. And um, and th they have concerns of of, of the use of Marine of um, Peg Newton Park because they're right across the street. They have their businesses, and sometimes if the same things are being sold at the market, it interferes with them. So I would think that we would, I would suggest that we not deny them the permit this summer but that we, we pay more attention to it. And as we meet with the Village Association, we bring this up in the use of um, the various uh, areas around town and how they might impact on, on businesses that are already there, rather than just saying, let's not do it this summer, but let's work it, work it out and then see what we come up with for next year. It's a know, little late in the season. Just, okay. We're gonna let you respond. To that. Yeah, but, uh, and also August 10th, as you know, is not a possibility that that Saturday isn't that road race weekend. It's a Friday, but uh, it's a Friday. Helen August. Kennedy thought that there might be someone else who might be looking at using the park that day as well, a local group. So Helen's suggestion was that we do. Think you go the following week. That go to eight seventeen if we do do it, and not eight ten. And not eight ten. Right. right, and we would end Which on 8-3. I forgot, I made a mistake. So we would end on 8-3. You would end on 8-3. Mm -hmm. So, so you wouldn't go beyond. So it's 5. It's 4 in July and August 3rd. <coughs> the 6th. You don't have the 27th listed on your application. Yeah, it's, it's all the four consecutive Fridays in July and then August 3rd. But right this actually now? says 6, 13, and 20. Oh, and the August 27th 3rd. The is not available? Yeah, right it now? says the 27th is not available on your application. I haven't seen yeah. that because I've... Yeah, it's it. crossed out. It's here, crossed actually. out. I did cross it out, so somebody must have. So oh. that, that that is probably not available. So the dates available: is July sixth, the thirteenth, the twentieth, and then August the third. And I have a question. I just sure. hate to be a stickler. Your mailing address is Hopkinton, but you list that your are to it. Is right, that your and summer address? Mm -hmm. um, are the other artisans? I mean, I, I guess I really like it being local you're around people sure. is that my expectation when we say it's local not people who are here short time it's right it's a mixture and i did get a phone call from someone who was from the um, merchants group who you spoke with because mm -hmm. we originally asked to go to peg noonan and they she called me and i'm sorry to write down her name and she said you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna um, say to the selectmen we're not interested in that but we would be okay with you being at Marina Park so I, I apologize I don't know who the person's name was but she was very comfortable with that and she said if you go back to the same location we're all right with that uh, who are the artisans is I mean is it a group that is together already or is this something no, just... that we could invite people who are local artisans saying it is available for local people to join in Absolutely. also Absolutely, it's not exclusive so if somebody local wants to do it they contact me we have a website and a Facebook page and then they send me an email or call me, and we're definitely open to that. So it's not an exclusive little club that only certain people can do it. And they, they pay a fee, though? Yes. Too. Yeah. OK. Um, what's the pleasure of the board? Uh, uh, again, I think every week is it's kind of like a business. So, you know, we have the Main Street mm -hmm. Fair a few times. We have had once a year, I mean, those type of events. but. 
whatever the board decides. Go ahead, Brent. Three Fridays in July, one Friday in August. It doesn't seem too excessive to me, to be honest with you. Okay, so you'd like to make a motion? To I, I'd make a motion that we approve uh, the request for July 6, 1320, and August 3rd. Okay. Second. Motion is a second. And we would like to include you next year as we move forward with the talks. Sure. With yeah. the I apologize I wasn't here two weeks ago when this first came up, but I was, I was told it was probably going to be, you know, not a rubber stamp, but it was our third year, so I apologize. Okay. Or I would have come the first time. So. so there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All opposed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, proclamation. Found with the Amateur Radio Association. Doug, would you like to read that into the record? Whereas the town of Falmouth has more than 150 licensed amateur radio operators who have demonstrated their value in public assistance by providing emergency radio communications. And whereas these amateur radio operators donate these services free of charge to the town in the interest of the citizens of the town as well as the world. And whereas these amateur radio operators are on alert for any emergency of Cape Cod and practice their communication skills during the American Radio Relay League incorporate field day exercise and whereas this year's field day exercise will take place on June 23rd and June 24th 2012 and now therefore we Kevin Murphy, Brent Putnam, Mary Pat Flynn, David Braga and Doug Jones as selectmen of the town of Falmouth by the authority vested in us do hereby proclaim week of June 18th to 24th 2012 as amateur radio week. I so move. That was a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Sure. Um, you want to sign that and just bring it all back down? Next up is uh, approval memorandum of understanding, Falmouth we Commodores. We oh, we already did that. I'm sorry. Next up is approved request for one day liquor license, high field. Uh, I held that just to give my disclosure that I'm the holder of an all alcoholic seasonal liquor license. I'll move approval. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, next up is a uh, approved request for a Sunday entertainment. No, that, that was a uh, one day liquor license, Falmouth Artist Guild fundraiser. Um, I'm just giving a disclosure that I'm the holder of an all alcoholic seasonal liquor license. Do I have a motion? Uh, I move the. Um, where, where are we? Falmouth Artist Guild. Okay. Oh, Falmouth Artist Guild. I move approval. Second. Motion to the second. I think we get to the bottom. Any something. further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I think we skipped the Seacoast Shores Association. Yeah, yeah. yeah Seacoast Shores. What uh, happened to that? Maybe we did. Jeez, uh, I'm sorry. Item five. You skipped over that. In yeah, we five. skipped over everything. No, no, no. You're number five, Appro approve uh, request for uh, seven one-day liquor licenses, Seacoast Shores. Just my disclosure, I'm the holder of an all-alcoholic seasonal liquor license. Do I have any other questions from no. the board? Yeah. And I think some of our folks are here. No, that's okay. the yes. Oh, they are. That's, uh, do I have a motion? Yeah, so move. And I'll second it. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Just for your information, there's a maximum on that of 30 in one year. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did I. We, we already did the. I feel we did. Uh, we did the other. We did Falmouth the artist skill. Guild. And the last one. Approved request for one-day liquor license, Falmouth Historical Society fundraiser. So. Just for my disclosure purposes, I'm, I'm the holder of an all-alcoholic seasonal liquor license. So moved. Motion. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, town manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a little, uh, little follow-up on the um, 
matter of the uh, signs, I wanted to advise the board that, uh, as you requested, I did work closely with Building Commissioner Ladio Gore over the past week in uh, further clarifying sign enforcement related issues which have recently arisen to the uh, maximum extent that we can do from a uh, staff standpoint. I know the board's talked about bylaw changes as well. Uh, just to uh, inform on this past Thursday afternoon, I joined Eladio and our sign officer, Ali Fitzpatrick, as well as two, two members of the, of the Design Review Committee for discussion with the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors on the uh, sign enforcement process. It was a constructive and enlightening dialogue as explanations were provided regarding the interpretation of the existing sign code and all parties agreed to continue to work together in communicating consistent information to town businesses. Also, uh, as the board is aware, work is moving forward on the redraft of the Selectman's five-year strategic plan document. I do appreciate uh, Heather Harper's great assistance in this regard, and I know uh, late in the day today, uh, Heather forwarded an electronic version of a uh, uh, first uh, redraft of that plan, and we welcome the board's uh, review and our further uh, work in that uh, regard to that important document. Also, uh, Wednesday, July 4th, brings with it a full schedule of community activities in Falmouth. I'm working closely with Chief Riello, Chief Sullivan, DPW Director Ray Jack, and ensuring adequate preparation for this important day of celebration. And as per usual, of course, town hall and related uh, town offices will be closed on Wednesday, July 4th uh, for this Independence Day holiday. Uh, members of the board, I want to thank Beach Commissioner Don Hoffer, the Beach Committee, related support staff for their fine work in preparing uh, the town's beaches for this season. Related to this, I want to th uh, thank Kathy and Cheryl, our colleagues in personnel, for their great assistance in preparing and processing uh, literally the mountain of paperwork necessary to bring in the town's summer seasonal, seasonal employees, not only for the beaches, but for the many other areas of parks, recreation, uh, and public works. Also, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, uh, I want to advise the town clerk, uh, Michael Palmer, and I are, were pleased to receive notification recently of a, a $10,000 voter educational grant uh, to the town of Falmouth from Secretary of State uh, Galvin's office. I've had discussions with uh, uh, clerk Michael Palmer regarding voter education related initiatives, which uh, we'll be undertaking uh, with those uh, grant funds to the town and we'll be providing uh, forthcoming details uh, to the board and uh, to the community uh, as well. Also, uh, the board will recall that uh, we've been working diligently and have had a couple announcements about the uh, long-awaited uh, pedestrian and sidewalk improvements uh, that lie on the Catherine Lee Bates uh, Road between the main library and Mullen Hall School. I want to uh, provide a bit of an update on that. Uh, continuing uh, with uh, behind-the-scenes staff work uh, on that with uh, representatives of uh, uh, staff representatives of the library and the schools as well. I'm pleased to advise that initially we had indicated that we thought we would lose six parking spaces uh, in the public crosswalk to be created for public safety purposes between the library and the school. Happy to advise that with some additional engineering, uh, utilizing the skills of our uh, uh, highly competent town engineer, uh, Peter McConnerty. We're only going to lose two parking spaces now rather than six. And I, we uh, all recognize there have been some public concern uh, with the highly used on-street parking in those areas. Uh, we certainly uh, were concerned about losing up to six parking spaces and reducing that from six to two and maintaining the uh, in incredibly important public safety improvement there. We're very pleased uh, with that enhancement uh, and that improvement. We'll also be adding some uh, uh, solar powered uh, school zone signs, uh, essentially along the lines that uh, Selectman Bragg has referred to and that uh, many of us have seen utilized in some other communities, uh, uh, which will also give notification to the drivers of their own speed in the school zone area, which should help uh, considerably with uh, speed enforcement. We look forward to that, those signs being posted at the beginning and the ending of the uh, school zone there, which we will be creating. Also, uh, we anticipate that some of that work, particularly the tree trimming, 
and some additional tree planting and the modest tree removal that would have to occur there would begin as early as the end of this week. A formal construction of the enhancement, the new sidewalk, the uh, pedestrian crosswalk, and the uh, new curbing would not begin until after the uh, Downtown Arts Festival uh, early in July. So the formal part of the project will begin later in July and will be concluded well before uh, the start of school. And we will have uh, some uh, a map and a uh, summary information in the uh, exit and entry areas to the library in the, in the location, uh, excuse me, in the entrance and exit, which are located on Catherine Lee Bates Road, so that uh, patrons in that area during library hours can view those plans and be reminded of what our anticipated schedule is for that uh, very, very important safety enhancement. And uh, members of the board, that concludes my report. Thank you. Do we have any individual selected reports? I have a couple. Go right ahead. Um, I wanted to mention that the uh, Cape Cod Commission um, has uh, voted to send the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Report, which is otherwise known as the SEDS, to Washington, to the Commerce Department, to the uh, Economic Development Administration for Commerce. Uh, this is a five-year uh, report, and um, it was so well done the last time that the county received uh, $65,000 in funds from Commerce to, uh, to work with this. Um, I have a, a hard copy of it. It's very thick, but it's also being sent electronically. And I think it would be really helpful to um, not only our, our EDIC, but the Economic Sustainability Subcommittee, as well as the, the town boards like planning and zoning. And, um, and, and it's just full of data that um, I think I mentioned before with regard to population, income across the Cape. Um, um, anyway. So I so that that's out now. It's it's approved and and uh, the documents I'm sure you'll uh, you'll find very useful. The other thing I wanted to mention was um, there was a piece I think it was in the Cape Cod Times. It was written by Eric Turkington, and as you may may know that the uh, uh, Conservation Law Foundation, the uh, the Buzzards Bay Coalition, uh, are, have. Um, have not been able to agree with EPA, Fed EPA, on a settlement regarding the lawsuit that they brought against the EPA. So it is now going to trial. And because it's going to trial, that if the EPA were to prevail in that, the EPA can actually make rules regarding non-point source uh, contamination as well as point source. And the object of those uh, two determinations obviously would be all the residents of Cape Cod as opposed to municipalities. So it would mean that if they do produce regulations that individual homeowners, property owners would have to comply with those. And uh, because no one else is a, is a party to the suit, there's been a discussion about whether or not the towns would want to become interveners in this lawsuit. If you are an intervener and you have status as an intervener, then you can actually have some say in the, uh, in the decision and how that might affect you. Now the Sandwich Water District and the Bourne Water District have, have expressed great concern about the, the lack of any of the municipalities or the residents being an intervener. So um, Gregor McGregor, Gregor McGregor, who is an attorney and, and in Boston, but he does a lot of work on the Cape, he has agreed, to, he has been in conversation with the Bourne and Sandwich Water Districts to determine whether or not there's any, any life to this concept of being an intervener. So the county has taken this up as well, the county commissioners, and um, because the, um, the, the Cape Cod Water Collaborative Executive Director Andy Gottlieb and the Executive Director of the Cape Cod Commission, Paul Nitzwicki, were both involved in the discussions originally with BBC, CLF, and EPA. And then they, they, they withdrew at some point when there was uh, an agreement that they would try to reach a settlement. So the county is also looking at the 
uh, at the possibility of maybe contacting the towns and um, uh, the towns and not just the water districts to see if there's any interest in the communities. Now I've had some emails from people in the town who read the article by Eric who is agreeing that yes, towns should consider whether or not they want to be interveners. So I'm just laying out the, the information on this right now, but it's something that we as a board should really think about as a community as to whether or not there's any real um, real purpose here and whether it would be important to do that, so. And, and in regard to that, uh, Eric did send me an email, asked us, asked if we would uh, consider intervening. Uh, I discussed it with uh, Julian and he is working with town council to see if in fact that's something that uh, they want to recommend to the board or not recommend to the board. Well, and I think, right. yes, and we should know what other communities are doing too and I think the county can bring that information back and you know what other towns are thinking. And probably the manager's uh, meeting, that might yes. come up as well. So it's on their radar screen and they're working on it to bring okay. it back to the board. Okay, good. Okay. That's and, it. Any other selection reports? I just want to make an announcement. The Board of Selectmen will not be meeting next Tuesday, uh, the 2nd of July. We will have, we're going to have a little break. We're going to have one short meeting on the 9th uh, that will talk, only cover one topic. Uh, which would be the year-end bills. Uh, there was uh, an area where we had five spots in that month, and uh, typically we would not have been meeting, but we'll be meeting on the 9th at 6 o'clock for a short one issue I item to go through the year-end bills as well. So uh, the next time we'll have a full meeting of the board would be on the 16th of July. Okay, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Hi. Both? I shall. Thank you. Green Harbor Waterfront Lodging is nestled in a woodland setting on a picturesque ocean inlet. Green Harbor offers so much for a fun-filled yet affordable family waterfront vacation. Enjoy our private boating beach with ramp and dock, free rowboats and paddle boats, oversized heated outdoor pool and kiddie pool. You'll enjoy our attractive waterfront and beachside accommodations. So visit us online at GoGreenHarbor.com.